So I was at the gym today and I was getting my workout in, right? I was doing some boxing, jump rope, shadow work. When I go to the gym, I typically say hello to a lot of people, right? So I know a lot of the guys and a lot of the girls that go there. There was a group of people where I was stationed at that came over to me and said, hey, you're putting on a lot of gains, man. I love what you're doing. When I started seeing you three months ago, you looked like a complete different person. And man, whatever you're doing, keep it up, right? And I think to myself often, because this wasn't the first time that it happened to me, right? It happened to me again at the boxing gym where somebody said, man, you look like you're in incredible shape. This is the goal. Saying that my body was the goal that they were looking to achieve someday for themselves. I'm not saying this to be cocky. I'm not saying this to say that I'm better than everyone. I'm not saying this to, to be this guy that's trying to say that nobody's going to be as good as me. The reason I'm saying this is because I noticed that the things that I do end up compounding into respect that I gain from the world, from both sex, men and women from any profession, because it's clear to see when a man is on his purpose and a man is on his mission, you're exuding this energy, this aura. There's this thing about you that people catch on and notice. There's something different about this person. They may not know you, and whether they do or don't, they're going to respect you, but there's a reason why. The first thing that came to my mind as I was thinking about these examples was, you know, if I never kept my word from day one, I never kept my word from day one. I would not command the attention and the communication that I'm receiving and the respect from the people that are around me that maybe see me constantly or maybe it's their first time seeing me. I thought about the first time that I started to work out. I was about nine or 10 years old and we just got a pull-up bar and I was trying to do my first pull-up and I couldn't do it. And I said to myself at that early age, one of these days I'm going to be able to do a pull-up. And I just kept trying every single day to do one pull-up. I worked on my negatives, which is when I go on the chair, I jumped up, get the bar right below my chin and work myself down. I did that eight reps for three sets every single day and sometimes additional sets, right? Because when you wanna be great, you gotta work overtime. And as the days went by, I was able to do my first pull-up. Then I was able to do my second pull-up, then third pull-up. Then I got all of my friends together and we were all working out, doing pull-ups, and I was able to do more pull-ups than everybody there. And obviously that came with respect and that came with my friends wanting to get better at the game, right? Because it's competition, which then made everybody better around me but it all started because I decided to keep my word. I worked on something repetitively, then it made the people that were around me see what's possible, which is an inspiration, which is why they respect me. And it's the same thing that happens in all these other fields that you enter in life. It could be real estate, it could be social media, it could be boxing, it could be lifting weights, it could be anything. When you start something, make sure that you keep your word because that's what's going to make you last in that marathon and fulfill that race and actually gain the results. Which brings me to my second point, lack of confidence. Nobody wants to speak to somebody that's lacking confidence, especially if you're looking to garner the respect of other people or even the respect of your own self. If you're not confident in the things that you're doing, if you never decide to confidently take that step forward, win or lose, you're never going to be respectable. And it stems from that first point that we were speaking about, not keeping your word. If you're not keeping your word and you're saying that you're gonna do all of these things every single day and you're not doing them, how do you expect to ever build any level of confidence? It's impossible. If somebody was lying to you consistently, maybe they said to you, hey, I'm gonna go do this tomorrow. I'm gonna go to the gym tomorrow. Be there by six, be there by seven. And six and seven comes around and they're not there. Now you're thinking, ah, oh, you know, maybe something happened, whatever. The person comes up with an excuse, okay, cool. The next day, yeah, bro, don't worry, I'm gonna be there at seven. Next day comes on, not there at seven. Now you start to think to yourself, man, this guy's bullshitting. He's always making up these excuses as to why he can't seem to show up and make things happen. Now, putting the perspective on the guy that's not showing up, do you think that he's going to be confident in, her, in his word? No, absolutely not. Shit, if I was that type of person, I fucking wouldn't. Why would I be confident if I can't keep my own fucking commitments? And that's why I do the complete fucking opposite, which is I do keep my commitments, and that's why I'm able to garner the respect and the attention of people now coming up to me and saying, wow, man, I see the gains that you're doing. Keep up the good work. That's a sign of respect, and you see that respect 
in all other areas of your life. Because the second that you decide to pour your focus into something and consistently do it, you're going to develop that confidence that you need and that swag to be able to communicate with other people that are around you about whatever it is that you do. Business, relationships, health and wellness, spirit, whatever the fuck it is that you're into. You have to develop that consistent habit and keeping your word every single day so that then you could be confident about yourself and be confident about the things that you do. Now, the third thing I want to speak about is over promising and under delivering. I mean, that's the worst strategy to have. If you actually want to satisfy your client, your girl, you're making a promise to one of your friends or one of your brothers, right? And you're letting them down. Now they're expecting something and you're coming up short. Nobody likes that shit. So I'll give you guys an example of a way that I under promise, if anything, and over deliver. I want to set the expectations where I know that, hey, if I'm setting the bar here and I actually am capable of coming up here, now I know that my client or whoever it is that I'm dealing with is going to be way more satisfied because now their expectations are gonna be blown out of the water, right? I mean, think about it. How much happier would you be if you're going to work, right? And you're expecting your check to be $4,000 for that week. And then it ends up coming for $8,000 that week. You're going to be way happier than it, if it comes out to be $2,000 for that week, then you're going to be fucking pissed, right? And would you really be able to respect the boss that's treating you that way? Absolutely not. But how about if you're getting this bonus and you're getting extra $4,000? Well, now it's a different story, right? Now you're like, wow, now I have to reciprocate some kind of way. How can I pay this back? any way that I can add more value to this person. And that's how we think as humans, right? That's the law of reciprocation. So instead, I'll give you guys a personal example of a property that I recently sold, right? I was speaking to the owner, you know, I understood that he wanted to sell it for as much as possible. And they were on the market for about $510,000, right? And instead I told him, you know what? I think that the reason why I didn't sell was because of X, Y, and Z. Let's go ahead and start and try this new strategy. I think that 450 is the right price to set on your property because it's gonna gain the right amount of interest. Oh, I don't know, that's too low, blah, 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 whatever. But you know, he, he decided to take me up on that, right? So I made him the promise, I can get you 450, and within a week, we've had over 13 offers and we actually accepted an offer for 500,000. So he's getting an extra $50,000. You think he's gonna be happy about that? Of course he is. That's what I mean by under promising and over delivering. People are always happier and they will respect you a lot more if you can actually keep up with your commitments and even over deliver where now you're giving them so much value that they're thinking to themselves, how can I ever repay you? That's respect right? That's how you have people that want to actually follow you on your journey and fully support you. Now, keep up with me on this fourth one, because this one's really, really important. Lack of results. I mean, seriously, you keep saying that you're going to do X and you're never doing it. Therefore, three months, six months go by, a year goes by. You're still in the same fucking situation, living with your parents. You're, you look like a fucking loser. You smell like a loser. And your pockets are fucking broke because you're not actually doing anything to change your circumstances, right? So let's say, for example, you have somebody that's in a relationship and he keeps telling his girl, oh, you know, I'm going to go to the gym, get myself right, blah, blah, blah. Never ends up going to the gym or says he's going to the gym, comes back, right? You could be on the perfect schedule in her eyes, right? You could say, yeah, I'm going to the gym, but you're really going out to McDonald's and coming back. And saying that you got a workout and you're like, baby, what's that smell? I, I feel like I smell like chicken figures or some shit. And then you'd be like, nah, I actually went to the gym, right? <laughs> but three months, six months down the line, your bullshit's going to show. And the real version of yourself, the real results that you've actually earned within that three to six month period of time, it's going to speak for itself because actions speak louder than words. So then what's going to happen? She's going to start losing respect for you she's gonna start losing attraction for you because not so much that you didn't make the gains, but that you didn't keep your word and you're showing these lack of results, right? Because if you're saying to somebody that you're gonna do something and you're not putting in the results after that three to six month period, then there's something that you're not doing. There's something that you're lying to yourself about and that's disgusting. That's not attractive and that's not respectable. For you to actually become somebody that's respected, you have to be the kind of man that says, I'm gonna commit to this and I'm gonna do whatever it takes to get these results. 
even if you thought that you were only going to need to go three times a fucking week, now you end up going five to six times a week because you realize that it was going to take a little bit of more work, a little bit of more effort than you anticipated. And you know what? That's respectable and that's attractive. Now, the fifth thing that's on my mind is you see all of these influencers, right? Where they're recording their gym sessions or this or that, right? And it's cool. I'm not hating on anybody because I do the same fucking shit. However, you see my results, right? The difference though is, is that there are some people that are working so hard to try to impress others that you can already tell that they're not necessarily working for the results. They're working for the validation of other people. And you could fucking smell that from anybody. It's really unattractive. It's not respectable at all. And that's the kind of behavior that other people will call you out for and say that you're fake. And you don't want to be called fake because now your reputation is at stake. Now your credibility is on the line. And you spent all this time trying to work on this fake credibility to try to impress somebody else. Meanwhile, the main person that you should be working on impressing is yourself. Because that's what actually counts. When you're at the gym, when you're out running game, building your business, building your relationships, whatever it is that you're doing, you're working to improve. You're working to impress yourself. Wow, I did that better than I did last time. Because that's what's actually going to garner the results and the results are going to garner the impression that you seek. But let it happen naturally because you're going to impress yourself and then the world is going to become impressed because they see the results. They see that you're keeping your word. They see that you're moving forward in life. And you know what? That's respectable. Now, the sixth thing that you want to keep in mind to garner that respect and be sure not to be disrespected just because of your pure ignorance, because you don't know that a lot of people actually don't know that they're doing the sixth thing. And let me tell you why they always talk about this idea. They always talk that they're going to do this and they're going to do that. Right. But they don't take the initiative and they know what they have to do. I'll give you guys an example. There was this one time I was driving around this property. It looked like a teardown. It wasn't a teardown, but it looked pretty bad. Right. And I stopped by, I spoke to the owner and I was like, oh, you know, I, I wanted to ask you, you know, cause I'm an investor in the area. If you've ever considered an offer for the property, he's like, oh yeah, you know, I actually have considered an offer. I'm thinking about moving to North Carolina, blah, 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 whatever. So we had a conversation. We ended up buying the property off of him, sold it to my friend who made a shit ton of money. He flipped the property. Everybody wins, right? However, the thing that I did that was different from everybody else in that community is that I noticed it. I understood that it was an opportunity and there are so many people hitting me up about real estate and wanting to do something in real estate. Yet so few actually take the initiative. I'm one of those people that takes the initiative. And it garners respect because what ended up happening? I made fucking money. My friend ended up making money. The owner ended up making money. The person that bought the house when it was fully renovated ended up buying a house that they could really call home and fell in love with it, right? So everybody was happy. And that's respectable, right? Because you're actually putting results on the board. You're changing and you're impacting the lives of other people by taking that initiative. But guess when you're not doing that? You're not doing that when you're not taking initiative, when you have an idea and you just let it flow until it magically just disappears into nothingness. Well, you know what? I have a theory about this. What if that idea ends up going into the mind of somebody else and that person ends up actually taking the initiative and because of that, he ends up winning big and garnering that respect. That's what probably happens because so many people have driven by this house that it somehow manifested in my mind. It was like, you know what, Jose, you should drive down this road. And I did. And I saw the opportunity and I took it and it made me a shit ton of money. Now in the scenario where it didn't make me a shit ton of money, it must have been for a specific reason, right? Because there's a reason why a lot of people aren't taking initiative in these opportunities that they can clearly see. And that's because they lack to say no. Now bear with me because there's a big point on this, right? They lack the ability to say no and their undisciplinary acts of maybe being in a table and saying, you know what? I'm not going to eat dessert for the next 30 days, 40 days, 50 days, 60 days. And then they see that dessert menu and they're like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to just get it today. You know, it's not going to hurt or whatever it is that they fucking commit to. And then they break that promise. They lack saying, no, you know what? I'm going to focus on my business for the next 30 days. I'm not going to go out and bullshit and go to these bars. I'm going to just lock in and work on myself for these next 30 fucking days. And if I get to do it, 
I'll reward myself. I'll go out to a bar, whatever the fuck, right? However, they lack the ability to say no because now their friend calls and says, hey, bro, we're going to go out here. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And then they go out and, and do these things, get sedated, lose track of their focus, lose track of their mission. That day turns into another day and into another day. And then you start to build this negative momentum towards the road that you don't want to take because it's away from the goals that you can actually attain for yourself that you're aiming to achieve for yourself. So learn how to say no because that's gonna come in handy when all the demons try to tempt you away from the things that you actually want. Now the eighth thing is similar to number six, which was not taking initiative, but this one is slightly different. And this is being afraid of taking risks. Now you understand what you want, it's there, it's in front of you. Let's say that you're out, right? And you're working on your game, you're working on your dating, and you see this beautiful girl walking by you. And you know you wanna go ahead and talk to her, but you're too pussy to actually go speak to her, approach her and say, hey, how's it going? Notice you walking by, my name's Jose, how's your day going? Doesn't have to be anything fucking crazy, doesn't have to be anything special. Just go ahead and talk to the damn girl, right? Yet, so many people are so afraid of taking that risk, why? Because they're afraid of rejection. They're afraid of losing. They're afraid of not being able to make it. And that sucks because if you want anything in life, if you wanna do anything incredible in life, you can't be afraid of failing. You can't be afraid of losing. Thomas Edison failed 9,999 times before that goddamn light bulb started to work. Imagine if he chose to give up in the middle of that process. He would have never achieved his goal. And that's what's important for you to understand. It's not for you to win in the first shot. It's not for you not to get rejected when you go ahead and approach that beautiful woman. It's not about that. It's about you taking the risk, you taking action on you and saying, you know what? Should it come down to it, the best thing that could happen is I can learn from that experience and get better on my next approach. And it's the same thing with business. Should everything go to shit and you lose a ton of fucking money? You know what? Let me tell you something. There's a reason why people spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on a school education, right? They go pay for this tuition and they end up having to pay for it and somehow they never end up fucking paying for it because it's a fucking scam. However, it's the same thing with life. I was a college dropout. I didn't finish my I didn't finish my degree in community college because I decided to pursue my dream. And that was a big risk that I was taking on me. But you know what? I'm happy that I took that risk because two years in of me chasing my dreams, I broke six figures. And not a lot of people could say that because I would have still been in college broke. That wasn't my life. That wasn't my path. I chose to take a risk on myself because that's what I knew to do best if I actually wanted to win big. I can't bet on anybody else. That's not respectable. I gotta bet on myself because I have my own self-respect for me and I know that I can win. And even if I lose, I get to at least learn. Turn that L instead of losing into learning because that's how you have to think about the game. Now we got two more that I wanna go ahead and address. And this ninth one is really important. So make sure that you get this one down. Lacking discipline, man. The reason why this is so important is because you start something, right? You're giving it your all. A week goes by, two weeks go by, and then you stop. You're lacking discipline, right? And now you're not gaining the results. Now you're just wasting your time. You put all your effort into this thing because you're seeing the bigger picture. You're lacking to keep yourself inspired, to keep yourself motivated. You don't understand why you're doing it. You're not staying on purpose because you got to do this for a purpose right? You got to do this on purpose for a purpose. When you start something, make sure that you finish it. Make sure that you stay disciplined. Understand that it's not about all the impulses and all the temptations and all the little things that other people are doing. It's about you winning. You winning. That's what's important. Because if you're not winning, somebody else is taking that crown. Somebody else that's staying inspired, that's not lacking that discipline, that's willing to go after it. And let me go ahead and say something real quick. It's not about being disciplined in the days that are easy. It's about being disciplined in the days that are hard, in the days that you don't want to do it, in the days that you don't want to get up. Because that's respectable. You see somebody that's doing something knowing that he doesn't want to do it, yet he knows that that's the formula to get better. And he's doing it anyways. No matter what weather, no matter what, con what condition, no matter what terrain, it doesn't matter. He's making it happen because he has the discipline to win. And that's the discipline that you have to adapt if you want to be successful and if you want to be respected. Because nobody likes somebody that quits early because of his lack of discipline. 
or gets tricked by some bullshit out into the world and does something that is completely going to take him away from his family, from his future, from the bigger picture because he was weak and undisciplined. Now, lastly, but most importantly, rule number 10 of the respect commandments. And this rule is the most important rule because you're going to start winning as long as you follow the nine rules that preceded this one. However, you're going to really win big if you decide to not be greedy, not be stingy and share the wealth with your people, because this is what's important. So many people get hated. So many people get killed. Some of the nastiest shit happens to people because they're greedy, they're stingy. And the people that supported them from the very beginning are left to rot while you're the only one shining. And that's not respectable. You have to put your people onto the game. All the people that are coming before us, you have to be a role model to those people. You have to let them know that it's possible. Just like I'm doing right now with this video. I've amounted a good or a great level of success and I'm just getting started. However, I feel like it's a duty of mine to be able to put everybody that's willing and capable onto the game so that maybe we can go ahead and run up a bag, right? We can go ahead and actually make something happen. I know for a fact, since I've gotten this far, that you can't do it all by yourself and you need good people on your side. And the best way to get good people on your side is to pay back that respect, to be able to pay it back to the people that supported you when you were coming up and to be able to share the wealth. Because let me tell you something, out in nature, thousands of years ago, when we would go out and hunt, or we would go out and kill something, and we would bring it back to our tribe, it's the men that weren't greedy and were actually giving and were putting his tribe on to the game, teaching them how to hunt, not just teaching them how to eat the fucking hunt, but actually going out into the wilderness, teaching them how to catch their own fish that was able to prolong their empire and grow as a successful tribe, as a successful family, as a successful community. And that garnishes a lot of respect. So be the leader in your tribe that goes out, gets the gold, and then puts your people on to what they have to do to be able to make it out for themselves as well. So these are the 10 keys to garner more respect and to actually succeed in life. Now, whether you choose to take this or not, that's on you because you have to have some kind of self accountability within yourself to understand that this is what it's gonna take for you to actually be successful and manifest the respect that you actually want from the world. I can only show you to the door, but it's up to you to actually go through it and earn the respect, earn the successes, earn the achievements that will actually help you live a life that's fulfilling and worth living.